Welcome to the Solomon Vanguard channel. Today we have some extremely exciting news. So first of all, we have the reprint festival collection. We have the cards confirmed. I don't want to go into it for too long. It's just they chose solid cards. I'm a bit afraid that there's no like chase cards in there. Um, if we had like an, an SP or a full art here and there, it would push down the prices of the actual reprints a bit more. Now they don't. So I don't know, the set doesn't feel all that valuable, apart from the fact that they chose solid reprints, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, then we got the ban list, though, and this is huge. So first of all, Hyuga got an errata, but it doesn't change a thing. So let's not go, to go over it. If you read anything of people saying, oh, you can only choose this one or blah, blah, nothing changes. Maybe in the future there will be an interaction that the wording matters, but nothing changes. Just Hyuga errata that does nothing. In Standard, we saw a ban of Violence Franger in Grand Blue and Variance Hardleg in DI. You may wonder, that makes no sense because these clans did nothing in Standard. And that is true. So this is essentially future-proofing. It's very possible that these cards would have been insanely broken once we get the new Grand Blue, DI, Mura and Pill Moon set. That's why they hit those. We'll see. Um, it's, it's sad to see them go because it essentially makes DI and Grand Blue completely unplayable in Standard until we get the new set. They were already very mediocre and now they're just unplayable because they lost their best finishers. However, what we were really, 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 really hoping for is Katrina is gone in premium. That's it. Everyone was going crazy. Oh no, together with Cyclone. Oh no, together with the new Krayl Metals. Oh no, Ines. Uh, uh. Yes, it was insane. I've been testing it. It was nigh unbeatable, except for Grand Blue. Grand Blue had still like a pretty solid matchup, but now it's gone. So yeah, my crusade is over. If you're a Neo fan, there's so much shit you can still do. Like, obviously, Katrina was like the bread and butter. It was the aggressive engine of the deck. But you can still play Ines with the defensive Antero. You still have the best grade 2 game in the world. You now have the Asha Stride. Like, obviously, it won't be as strong anymore because Katrina after next stage and premium collection felt like tier 0, essentially. Now that won't be the case. So that's good. And we'll see where it goes from here. And then we get to the card reveals. So card reveal wise, we got two Metal Borgs. We have Metal Borg, your Buster, Auto on V and R when placed. If you have a Vanguard with Metal Borg in its card name, cost Soul Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it, and this unit gets power plus 10k. Not too exciting, but it's a double rare. Um, if you want to make a Metal Borg budget deck, that's an option. And we also saw Metal Borg Sin Buster, another double rare. Auto on V when placed, search your deck for up to one Metal Borg, your Buster, call it to R and shuffle your deck. So that's a cool plus one. Act on V once per turn, cost counter last one, and until end of turn this unit gets power plus 10k and your opponent cannot call grade 1 or greater cards from his or her hand for the battle this unit attack. It's not the best guard restrict, it just seems to me like it's gonna be a solid budget build, it works with the new grade 3 uh, triple rare that we saw last week. Overall, it's fine. It's not gonna change much, but it's cool to have. Especially for, again, budget players, I assume. Maybe this also works with the Grand Galop we'll eventually see. Then we got the uh, OTT stride from the Premium Collection, Sterling Witch Momo. It says auto on V when it attacks, cost Counter Blast 1 and turn a card from your G-Zone phase up, discard up to 3 cards from your hand, and for each card discarded, Three of your front row units get power plus 10k until end of turn. If you discard three cards, at the end of the battle, stand this unit and it gets drive minus two. So that's just a solid first stride. OTT missed a solid first stride. If you ran Tsukuyomi, okay, you had a Tsukuyomi card, that plused you a little, but it did nothing beyond that. OTT had no strides that really pushed, and now they have one. Is it broken? No. Is it bad? No. It's just a solid card, uh, power level wise. It's an eight that they didn't really ask for, but are happy to receive. Also, the art is pretty cool. So overall, this is just a solid card. Finally, though, what I'm mostly excited for is the new set. We've all been knowing that it was coming, but we are getting a essentially roomy labyrinth set. We have our Nitros, our Harry, yes. And then a really big surprising show. There's five VRs this time. Lukier Venus is also coming back. Now, this is a gorgeous card. I'm so hyped for this set. I'm probably... This is the most hyped I've been for a standard set since My Glorious Justice, I suppose. Nitro is getting support. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. And then we have, of course, Sherrod as well, looking amazing. This is a very good Sherrod art. And we have Yasuye. I know nothing about G Murakumo. <laughs> I never touched that deck back then. I'm sure some Murakumo players are happy to see it return. But overall, for me, the hype is really in the DI, the Pale Moon, and of course, the Grand Blue. Gorgeous art. Uh, there's 34 SPs. So once again, we'll probably see some SP packs and then some other extra SPs. 
So that is really, really cool to see. Again, that will drive down the prices of the rest of the cards because the whales hunt all the big high rarity cards. So that was all for today. This was a very hype stream. We had a solid ban list. We had a cool OTT stride, some fine budget TP strides, and then the reveal of the art of these beauties. Like this video, smash like for these beautiful reveals. Subscribe to this channel and I will see you soon. Ciao.